Okay, hello everybody. This will be the lecture 3 for your answers for your worksheet 7.1. That was your homework for Thursday. So the purpose of today's lecture is for you to take your worksheet and to mark your worksheet according to the answers here. Now remember, we are not asking you to have word for word answers similar to us. Alright, but the concept should be there. Before we move on, please ensure that you have um, changed this portion here. It's supposed to be 1NA, 1Express, 1NA. Please amend this. This should be at the top part of your notes. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so let's have a look over here. The first question states, the three states of matter can be explained using the model of particulate nature of matter. Use this model to answer the following questions. Now, some of you have um, been struggling with this in your workbook. I think the question is, the answer that you must take note is they ask you to use this model, all right, to use this model to answer the following questions. And the first question that you have to answer is, compare the arrangement of particles in solid and liquid. Now, the word compare means you have to make a comparison. And what is the meaning of make a comparison? Means you must have solid versus liquid. And since they ask you to use the model, and the model is referring to the particles, okay, you need to talk about particles in your answer. You cannot be talking about the properties, so we do not want to have properties in your answer. So if you have, talk, if you have spoken about how solid has got a definite shape or volume, then your answer will be incorrect. Okay, so let's look at the answer now. All right, what is the arrangement of particles in a solid and a liquid? If you compare, let's have a look at page 2 of your notes in 7.1.1. All right, we talk about arrangement versus movement. The question now just wants arrangement. So let's look at the arrangement. The particles in the model of matter for solid, the particles are very close together, very closely packed. In the liquid, they are also very closely packed. So what is the difference? The difference is that one is in regular arrangement, okay? And liquid, the particles are in an irregular arrangement. So where do you get the three marks? You get one mark for stating that the particles in both solid and liquid are closely packed because they both are closely packed. And you get one mark for stating that the particles in the solid are in a regular arrangement. See over here? So we use the keyword regular arrangement. Okay, now we are not talking about movement because the question only wants arrangement. Then in liquids, look at the arrangement. The arrangement is kind of like all over the place. So we say that this arrangement is a irregular arrangement. So you have one mark for both closely packed, one mark for regular arrangement for solids, and another mark for irregular arrangement for liquids. And that will answer the question for 1A. Now, at any point of time when you want to pause the video, you can pause the video to do your corrections or to check through your work. Alright, let's go on to question 1B. They ask you to describe, okay, and explain the movement of particles in a piece of wood. Okay, so they ask you to describe. Okay, they ask you to describe and explain movement. So now we shouldn't be talking about arrangement. We should be talking rather about, okay, we should be talking about movement of particles. Okay, so how do the particles actually move? So we must first describe the movement and then we will explain. So your question has got two parts. 
first part which is to describe the movement and the second part which is to explain this movement. Okay, before we do that, let's have a look at a short animation at the bottom here. This is your Bunsen burner and you are actually holding on to a spoon. Okay, so let's watch. Look at the particles inside the solid spoon. Alright, they seem to be in a regular arrangement, but we're not talking about that. Look at the movement now. Are they moving freely from one place to another? Let's trace the location of one particle. Let's look at this particle that Miss Lee is pointing to. Is this particle moving all over the place? No, they seem to be staying at the same spot, right? So, what do we say? Alright, remember your page 2 of your notes under arrangement for solid. We say, number 1, that in the wood, the particles vibrate. That's one mark because you are describing the movement. So, the movement is they are vibrating. And how are they vibrating? Because they ask you to explain the movement. Alright. So how they are vibrating, let me tear apart the answers for you. So vibrating is to describe, okay, and fixed is basically explaining. Because the question wants you to describe the movement. So the describing the movement is they are vibrating about their fixed positions, okay. And how, how are they moving? They are moving in fixed positions. Fixed positions means not freely. Okay, they are they remain in the same position, although vibrating. So you may want to take note of that. Okay, let us move on. Let's look at question number two. Question number two states. An airtight container, okay, there's an airtight container, that means the top part is actually covered, air cannot exit, okay, it's filled with oxygen gas. So, inside here will be the particles for oxygen gas. A force is then applied onto the piston as shown in the diagram below. So, this force is exerting a downward force, you are pushing the piston downwards. Can the piston be pushed into the container? if the container is filled with water. So I think what this question is asking you is basically about the property, about whether something can be compressed. Now the force is going here, so you are actually pushing and you are compressing the oxygen gas. Now you know from your notes that gas can be compressed. Why is that so? Remember, in your particulate model of matter, okay, your gas particles are actually very far apart. So, there's a lot of space here for the particles to be pushed, okay, to be pushed closer together. Now, if you look at your liquid, if you look at your liquid, we would notice that your liquid has got lesser spaces and therefore cannot be pushed closer together. So the question is actually asking you, if I replace this container with liquid, known as water, can this piston, which is this black color top here, can it push the liquid down? Okay, that means the question is asking you, can water be compressed? Okay, can water be compressed? Now, if you look at your notes, you would know that Liquids cannot be compressed. So let us look at our answers now. Okay, you will remember this diagram which Miss Lee has drawn for you on page 2 of your notes. So we will say that can the piston be pushed if the container is filled with water? The answer is no. And why no? So this is the answer. You must have this in your answer. Liquids cannot be compressed, okay? So this is a key word in your answer. You must say that it cannot be compressed. Why? Small spaces between the particles. So you must remember that in order for something to be, in order for matter to be compressed, there must be a lot of spaces between the particles. Look. At the liquid particles, there is actually very, very little space because they are still relatively 
closely packed. Okay, so they cannot be compressed. Alright, so again, there are two parts to the question. So your answer must have two parts, one part and the second part. Now you might ask me, Miss Lee, what if I just write be because of the small spaces between the particles? That would be incomplete. You must mention that there are small spaces between the particles, so therefore liquids cannot be compressed. Okay, because they ask you to explain why it cannot be pushed into the container. So these two answers must be present in your own answer. Okay, let us move on. Okay, so welcome back. <clears throat> if you had taken a short pause. So now let's have a look at this question 2B. Explain why oxygen gas okay, has a lower density than water of the same mass. Now, you, your science teacher would have already told you yesterday this question. Okay, please change this question to same volume. Okay, so there is an error with this question. So now before I show you the answer, let us look at how to understand this question. Now they are basically asking you why oxygen gas has lower density than water when it has the same volume. So in order for you to explain this, you need to use the model to help you, okay, the particulate model of matter. So it is already here. So this is water because it is liquid and this will be oxygen. Now this is the model. Now I just want you to imagine that this square outline here, okay, is the same area as this square outline, right? I mean it's the same size. Huh? So we are going to say that this shows you that both oxygen and water have the same volume. Alright, now in order for you to tackle this question also, you need to be very clear about how to calculate density. Density is equals to mass divided by volume. Okay, so density equals to mass divided by volume. Now I would like to ask you, if volume is the same, let us give the volume to be um, 10 cm cube. Here also 10 cm cube. Okay, so let's say the volume is 10 cm cube. The volume here is 10 cm cube because it is the same volume. Alright, now let's determine the mass. Now remember what is mass. I'm going to write this here in a different color. Mass is basically the amount of matter or particles in an object. So imagine this is the same volume of water, same volume of oxygen. How many, what is the mass of water? How many particles are there in 10 cm cube of water? You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 over 10. How many particles are there in 10 cm cube of oxygen? 1, 2, 3. So you put 3. So now let us identify our answer. This is 0 0.6 and this is 0 0.3. So now you can see that water has a higher density than oxygen gas. Why is that so? Definitely not caused by volume because volume is the same. So what actually caused this difference? I hear some of you are actually talking about it. Good. It's basically the number of particles that are present per unit volume. So if I have more particles in the same volume, it means I'm more crowded, I'm more packed, right? That means I am more dense because dense means that I have more matter per unit volume. If I'm less dense, means I have fewer particles, so I will have less matter per unit volume okay you can always rewind the lecture to listen to the explanation again so let's show you the answer so the first thing that you will have to write in order for you to get the mark you must say oxygen gas which is this model over here that has got the same volume as liquid okay has fewer particles 
per unit volume. Per unit volume means that in the same volume as water. So if I use 100 cm cube of water and I use 100 cm cube of gas, 100 cm cube of gas will have fewer particles as compared to water in the same 100 cm cube of water. Okay, so the key point here will be fewer particles per unit volume. All right, the next point, and then you must make reference to density. This will be the second marking point. So you must say density is mass per unit volume. <clears throat> so since you have fewer particles in the same volume of gas compared to more particles in the same volume for liquid, oxygen gas will have a lower mass because only three particles compared to six particles, so lower amount of matter here compared to this. So we say that it has a lower density. So three marks. Huh? You must say that it's fewer particles per unit volume. You must make reference to density. And then you must say, therefore, oxygen gas in the same volume has got lower mass and therefore lower density. Okay? Now let's look at your last question, question 3A and 3B. They ask you, using the model of the particulate nature of matter, explain why solid has a definite shape but not liquid. Okay, and the hint is you must explain in terms of the movement of particles. So basically, the particles in a solid can vibrate about their fixed positions. Okay, they can only vibrate about their fixed positions. And why is it they cannot move far apart? Because they are held together by strong attractive forces. Now, strong attractive forces are basically the forces that exist between one particle, between two particles, okay? So, for example, if I were to draw two particles, three particles for you, why the particles in your solid are so close is because the forces of attraction, that means the force that is existing between these two particles, are very strong. Whereas for gas, they are so far away from each other. Why? Because there are very weak forces existing between them. That is why the gas particles can move very far apart from each other. Okay? Last but not least, we must also compare why in a liquid it has no definite shape. Because in a liquid, the particles can slide past one another, although they are held by strong attractive forces. Okay, so even though they are held together by strong attractive forces because they are still quite close, the difference is actually the point that liquid particles can slide past one another. And because they can slide past one another, they can actually move more freely as compared to your liquid, uh, sorry, as compared to your solid. So your solid particles cannot move freely okay they can't move freely because they can only vibrate about their fixed positions because they are held together by very very strong attractive forces whereas your liquid is only held together by strong not very strong okay let's move on to 3b you are supposed to use the model again to explain why Liquid has got a definite volume, but gases does not. Now, remember why liquid has a definite volume, but gases does not. You have to think about the arrangement of the particles now. So, we say that your particles in your liquid are still closely packed and they are held by strong attractive forces. Okay, that's why there is a definite volume. Okay, because they are still closely packed and their forces of their their attractive forces is still very strong. Secondly, because the particles in your gas are very far apart, okay, and they are held together by weak attractive forces. And since they are held together by weak attractive forces, it means that these gas particles can move very far apart from each other and they can escape from the container that they are in. Thus, their volume is never fixed. 
but liquid although it has no definite shape if you pour the liquid into a container you will realize that the liquid volume will still stay the same unless evaporation occurs lah. so if you cover the container the liquid volume won't change at all okay because the particles are still closely packed but they are held by strong remember ah, very strong is only for solid so they are held by strong attractive forces okay so thank you very much for listening to this lecture now that you have finished marking your work of your worksheet 7.1 okay please continue with the rest of your lesson for today you will probably have to look at the lesson guide and the homework is worksheet 7.2 and you can use textbook page 128 to 130 pages 4 to 5 of your notes to help you to do worksheet 7.2. So please complete this over the weekend because on Monday, there will be another lecture that will show you the answers and you will need to mark your work and do corrections. Thank you very much, Set Once, and have a fruitful day and a wonderful and safe weekend.